Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Fight Night podcast. I am your sexy host, Adam, and then there's Andy. That's me. You're a less sexy host, but still your host. You got to deal with it. Uh, if you want to check out this podcast on other platforms, you can check us out on Anchor. We're on Spotify and we are on YouTube. If you want more sports betting and fantasy content, check out B3T Sports. Dot com. If you want a shot to win a free NFL jersey, check out b3tsports.com slash contest. I am the host of another podcast, the Bet Bath & Beyond podcast, and Adam is the host of the Kurt Crew Fantasy podcast. You check those out where you listen to podcasts. You want to start That's with our sure. stat of the week? No, first I want to point out that I, you spoke about a free jersey. Yes. I ended up getting a free jersey. Yeah, from Caesar Sportsbook, right? From Caesar Sportsbook. <laughs> you got a and sick I've, white Justin Fields one. Yes. And I was it was supposed to come today. I was going to have it on. Oh, got for the delayed. Show? Got oh, delayed. Did it really? I was That's so sick. excited. I was so excited to just like come out and like Goku drip. The uh, the winner of the B three T Sports uh, jersey giveaway, um, they decided on a Tampa Bay Buccaneers Rob Gronkowski jersey. So that's the one they got. Really? Set. Really? I know, right? I thought that was interesting. But Gronk, hey, Gronk is one of the best to ever do it. So, so what do we got here for our stat of the week? So stat of the week. So this is the first five career starts for four different LSU wide receivers. Oh, I liked this one. You showed me this one earlier. Odell Beckham Jr., 25 receptions, 419 yards, and two touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Jarvis Landry, 25 receptions, 243 yards, two touchdowns. Justin Jefferson, 26 receptions, 493 <laughs> yards, three touchdowns. Uh-huh. Jamar Chase, 23 receptions, the least out of them, 456 yards, five touchdowns. Oh, yeah. And now, I mean, that's I- credit to Brett Coleman for compiling that. But Well, and, you know, uh, it's interesting because... The, the other guys were drafted to be good, but they weren't drafted. Like, I don't think anyone was drafting Odell to be like the best wide receiver. I, I, I mean, like go back to go back, look at the draft, the, the circumstances of him getting drafted. The sure. fact that he fell that far. Right. But I'm it? just I, I'm just saying like and then you also look at Landry and no one drafted Landry in the sense that, like, oh, you know what I mean? So yeah. it, it's. Uh, I'm I'm glad that Jamar Chase is living up to it as well, but he also has his college quarterback, which is really unique. You know, uh, they have already got a connection. I think that that really helps him get acclimated to the NFL. Uh, my stat of the week: so the most rushing yards after contact per attempt so far this season. Uh, the leader is Tony Pollard with six point four. Tony Pollard is a good running back. Uh, he would be a starter on I think several teams. They, yeah, they, I mean, like, and it's interesting. I don't know what they're going to, I mean, they're going to keep him, but they can only keep him until, like, they're not going to pay him. Like, they p- paid Zeke a ton of money. So I don't know what they're going to do um, with that. Maybe they'll if try they, to trade if him they in the win, offseason. I, if they win, like, if they go to the Super Bowl, I could see uh, Amari and Zeke taking significant pay cuts to keep the team together. That's possible. I, I mean, I, I would not rule it out. I think that's definitely a possibility. Yeah. Number two on the list, we got a tie with Chubb and Robinson, both rocking 5.8 yards after contact per attempt. Again, both good running backs. I think Robinson's would be probably even better if he had gotten actual work, like reliable work at the beginning of the season, besides getting sniped by Carlos Hyde and Urban Meyer. But, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> What, what do you yeah. do? You have any? Do you have any fantasy matches riding on tonight? Uh, no. So I dominated this week. Did my you? teams were they blew people out? Blew people out. What? what the, how many leagues are you in this year? What's, f- what's four? Four with for an this asterisk. Year? I'm in five, but one of them is tied to a bet with the. It's a uh, best ball league, so I'm not oh, actually okay. managing it. Sure, um, sure. But the loser of that league between us four brothers. Um, has to grow a mustache, shave everything else off, and then leave that as their profile picture for the next year on Twitter. <laughs> that's actually really funny. I, I, yeah. I enjoy that. Yeah. Um, no, that's good. So how, what's your like overall record uh, in your four leagues? Do you happen I think to have I'm, that? I think I'm just over 500. Just over 500? Yeah, I had uh, a couple bad beats. 
Sure. Um, and a couple people I shouldn't, a uh, couple of bad sits versus starts. It happens. I mean, like, especially at the beginning, there's still so much football left. Um, I'm in, I'm in 10 leagues and I think, uh, I'd have to, let me double check. I have currently, uh, let's see here. I'm 27 and 13 and I'm probably going to go seven and three this week as well. Uh, I had a, I had a shot. I mean, it was super slim. I had a shot to beat you in one of the leagues. I needed Lamar like to go for 40 points and for none of it to involve uh mark andrews but that was not gonna happen <laughs> and then i still have a chance i could go eight and two i just need Pittman to not score two and a half more points so that's <laughs> that's what i'm hoping for whoopsie yeah um we had could some be worse injuries. you could be john gruden uh i could be john gruden yeah speaking of before we start news and notes john gruden is I mean, I don't think it's official yet, but reports yeah, are coming he out. Yeah, officially that, resigned. Oh, did he official, yeah, officially he, resign? Yeah, he told the team. Um, yep. So he is. You know, he was. Um, some emails of the past were brought up involving uh, racial and uh, misogynistic and homophobic remarks. So John Gruden has taken it upon himself to resign. Obviously, so I don't know. I don't know who they're strictly fantasy football. Speaking, I don't know who their offensive coordinator is off the top of my head, uh, and I don't know who their defensive coordinator is either. So uh, I don't isn't know. that Gus Bradley? Oh, that could be. I think it's. I, I don't. I don't know who they're going to end up. Um, I don't know who we'll they're going to replace I, him with. <laughs> like, I also don't know. I mean, no one that really. I mean, obviously. Uh, you don't want that in your organization, but from the players' do you think perspective, the, uh, do you think the team replaces him with uh, the most qualified black coach? Uh, maybe. I mean, in the middle of the season, though. Uh, just within the organization, oh, but to sure. make a, yeah, you, uh, to kind of distance themselves. Uh, they, give an they intro might. guy. I don't know uh, what I, that coaching staff looks like. I saw somebody just sent something on Twitter uh, of a put this guy there. It was just. I, I'm interested mostly how this will impact because this really impacts the players. Because if you knew that if this hadn't happened, John Gruden came in and said, I want you to sign Derek Carr again, they'd have signed Derek Carr again. Because. Yeah, I this mean, is interesting because Derek Carr said he was going to table contract, contact, yeah. contract talks until after the season. He might be like, I want out. I mean, he's yeah. he. They finally started balling with this team, right? And, and who knows? I mean, like they've got they've got decent pieces, but and again, they paid him a hundred million dollars on a ten year contract. Obviously, I'm I'm assuming that that is going to be saved from them. Uh, like so, we'll see. Um, but that's the first bit of news that broke just a little bit ago. We also had some injuries this weekend. Some of them were not very fun. Uh, Max Williams, he hurt his knee. He's probably out for the season. Uh, I don't know specifically the knee injury, but it sounded like he's out. Tom Brady hurt his thumb. Nothing major. I would just monitor it, make sure that nothing crazy goes on. But I, I mean, it's Tom Brady. I'm, I'm not too worried. Saquon, ankle sprain low ankle sprain not a terrible one it looked bad the images that i saw like as he after he rolled it but it's looking two to four weeks he's known to come back a little early i, I mean i wouldn't bank on it but that's what we're looking at there juju smith schuster hurt his shoulder he's gonna need surgery it's gonna take four months to heal i mean he's out for the season Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Now, this one looked really bad. He looked like he was in a lot of pain, but it turned out just to be a sprained MCL. Again, not great, but he's definitely going to miss this upcoming week. I don't know how long he'll be out. Kenny Galladay, knee and hamstring issue. I mean, this guy is just, I can't catch a break. I don't know what. Uh, Daniel Jones got a concussion. He's in the protocol. And Trey Lance, apparently this broke just a couple, maybe an hour or two ago. Trey Lance has a sprained knee as well. Uh, am I missing any injuries? Trey Lance has a sprained knee. I didn't know that. Yeah, that that just came through. That, I don't know if they're. They say it's putting his week in jeopardy, but I I don't know yet. 
Well, when he runs for 89 yards, that's uh, yeah important. He's a he is the Konami code. Uh, let's see. Did I miss any injuries there? Is there any other news and notes you want to go over here? Um. Yeah, you, I think you hit all the all the major ones. The big um, ones. Uh, no, uh, Russell Wilson. Oh no, you're right. Uh, Russell Wilson ruptured his uh, finger. He's going to be out. Was it it's four to eight weeks, something like that? Yeah, that one's that one's weird. It, um, I forget what it's called, but basically he the tendon got severed here, mm -hmm. and so he couldn't bend his finger at the top. So there's two different options. They could basically hold it straight and or in a certain position, and then it would heal on its own, or they could do surgery and right. hope that. But I don't and have a higher rate. One of them was like a higher healing rate. Of re rate. Yeah, a rate of re-injury. And one was a shorter healing time. And I don't know which one Russ took. I, I think uh, from what I understand, Russ took the surgery, which is the uh, which is the higher re-injury rate, but the quicker healing time. Um, so I, I, he's hoping to be able to play in four weeks from what I understand. But I, he again, who knows, maybe it gets re-injured. Um, Geno Smith did not look terrible. I mean, that no. interception was crazy, but I mean, I, I, when it happened, that's not on him. No, no, that's no, 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 no. But like, I, I think that when Geno went in, I thought this is going to be really bad for DK and Lockett. And I think it's still bad for Lockett. It's pretty bad for Lockett, but I think it'll be fine for DK. Honestly, I mean, like they're going to hyper target him. Um, let's go go yeah so i i don't know i'm interested to see how what the timetable looks like for russ but let's talk about this week obviously we're not going to have anybody from the ravens or colts in this list because we're in the middle of that game but yeah. we're going to talk about the top five qbs from the week uh we got justin herbert tom brady josh allen Jameis winston and <laughs> davis mills uh what stands out to you here and uh this group Davis Mills, what the crap? I, it's, the, it's know, the Patriots defense. Bill Belichick, go like the only time rookie quarterbacks beat him is when the other team is so good around them. The the Texans are not an outstanding team, oh and no, Davis Mills disintegrated them. I have to I give all the credit to the Texans coaches in the world. They are fighting tooth and nail amidst of the Deshaun Watson turmoil, bad picks, bad trades. That whole organization is looking for a fresh start. Davis Mills showed he can play in this league. And now he has to do it more than one week, but All right. Do you want to hear a crazy stat? Um there's only been there've only been two quarterbacks to throw for three two rookie quarterbacks to throw for three or more touchdowns on a Bill Belichick defense. It is Davis Mills and Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so that I, I heard that the other oh, day. Oh, that's I right. Because that Pat Mahomes didn't play as a rookie. Right. Exactly. He played so like one yeah, game oh. or something. Um, yeah, he played so I, I think that's interesting. Josh Allen, obviously, he had a pretty good game. Jameis Winston, again, he had he was just efficient. I mean, four touchdowns on only 15 completions. He did throw an interception. <laughs> I will, that's the most. That's the most attempts he's thrown all year. It's nuts. I, I, I under. I don't want to like cast Janus Winston aside yet. I, when Michael Thomas comes back, I want to see what he's like when he's. I have I, a true. I think number that one. offense is going to take a huge jump because I, I, I mean, Jameis Winston was throwing to Mike Evans his basically his whole career, and then they uh -huh. threw in Chris Godwin had. Cameron Braid there the whole time. I mean, they had enough weapons for him to chuck it up all the time. Yeah. He's throwing to Marquez Calloway and to Deontay Harris. I, I, I am Alvin confident Kamara. that that offense will take a step like you had just said. I yeah. just... Winston, to me, uh, he hasn't shown me that he like deserves a, like an extension or like to be a long term quarterback in the league. Yet. He's like a get it done guy, maybe. But I don't know if Sean Payton's like this is what he wants. I I really want to see him with Michael Thomas, Tom Brady, yeah. the the man, the myth, the legend. Thirty completions, four hundred eleven yards. You and I have been singing those praises all, like all off season. I know like we have him in a bunch of leagues. I love I love. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Uh, yeah, I was same. just, I mean, it, depending on the format, I mean, he's like number two. I mean, he's, I think Patrick Mahomes is the only guy. 
ahead of him because Kyler Murray really didn't have a great week last he week. He didn't have a great week. No, he didn't. Um, and Tom Brady is like, and no, and basically, no matter the scoring format, rushing touchdowns aside, is number in the top three. I mean, you he's 40, what, 44? Yeah. I thought hey, it I could mean, be I, the one by the end yeah. of the year. Uh, let me see here. I want to know. Um, I want to see how many touchdowns has he thrown for so far this season? Is it? I feel like it's a crazy amount. Is it 19? Um, 15. Uh, let me see. 15, oh, 15 and ran for one. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, it's he is playing at a crazy pace. I think that he he's definitely going to win you leagues, especially if you got, like, certain stacks. Antonio Brown is elite uh, in the game against Miami. It shouldn't be hard against Miami, but... Even, like, with Gronk out, all three of those receivers have okay games. Like, it's not like one's getting completely left in the dust like it was at the beginning of the season. Like Chris Godwin is Mr. Consistent Reliable, and the uh-huh. other guys are, they will either make you or break you in a week. Chris Godwin has not had a bad week. Right. No, I agree. And the other guys have been up and down. However, I pivoted to Antonio Brown in both leagues in redraft where I have Tyler mm-hmm. Lockett. Yeah, that, I think and, that was good. I mean, like, there, there, you were like one play away from it being like pretty good no matter what. Yeah. But like Antonio Brown went nuts. Yeah. Uh, and then Justin Herbert is the one. That game oh was my insane. Gosh. Okay. Uh, this should have been the stat. Uh, I think it was 401 times. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. A team has scored um, 40 plus points without With no- a turnover. Yep. This is the first time a team l- scored more than 40 points, did not turn the ball over, and lost. And that's the most Browns thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, d- no, it, it's the most. Uh, Justin Herbert oh, yeah, is a don't, top, like, th- top three quarterback in this league. And what, based got, off of got, how. You got Mahomes, Brady, Herbert. Is that what you're. I mean, in no particular order? I, no, I think it is Allen. I think nobody's throwing the football better right now. Sure. I, I mean, like, I, I think it's it, Herbert and then Mahomes. Herbert has been interesting. It, it disintegrating teams. Yeah. I mean, and Herbert is like I, people had some concerns. I know uh, coming in to, from his rookie year because he was a quiet guy. They were like, I don't know if he's a leader. He's athletic and he can and he can throw the ball. I was listening to I wish I could remember who it was, but uh, I was listening to a scout talk about, you know, I only saw two guys who have this ability when they throw the ball where they're throwing it and it looks effortless, but it has so much umph on it. It's like a bullet with finesse. He's like, I saw it with Josh Allen. And then I saw it again with Justin Herbert. He's like, I, these guys who are really big, strong, athletic guys who can sling the ball and make it look effortless. Was so, it Drew Brees on the um, oh, it, commentary it last night? Yeah. Yeah, it was When Drew Brees, Brees goes like, the ball comes out differently. When uh-huh. Drew Brees... Number two all time in passing <laughs> goes, I've never seen anything like this. Uh-huh. There you go. Tua was uh, a great pick. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. Okay, so now we got wide receivers. Uh, Devontae Adams, Mike Williams, Antonio Brown, Darius Tony, <laughs> and Mike Evans. There's okay, so in our main league, it's a dynasty league. Mm-hmm. Kadarius Tony fell into the third round, yes, and I lied now, directly to Ian, who is on you with the uh, is on the Bed Bath and Beyond podcast yep, with you, co-host of the Bed Bath um, Beyond show. I lied directly to his face that I wasn't going to take Kadarius Tony, and then traded a uh, future third and a fourth to come back into this See, draft and grab him because I thought funny. he's a first rounder. Right, like, exactly. The team's either completely bonkers or they saw something that I don't know about football. They are also the ones who took the shot on Odell Beckham Jr. Right. Like, go back. He wasn't that level of prospect. He well, wasn't. No, and- and it's funny you took him I, I was I was gonna take him if you didn't take him like no one wanted him they were like everyone I mean we were on the same page on that I almost just, sold him for capital. pennies right before this I said you know what they're gonna put him in the punt return game I think this week and our league has punt return yards uh, yes, so yes, I, I said I wanted to take a shot and look 
Michael oh, Pittman touchdown. I just lost my. I just lost in the Megalo Bowl because Michael Pittman. Unless that's offensive pass interference, I kind of hope it is. <laughs> it's not. Oh man! Now what a bad throw from Carson Wentz too. Like, didn't he have? Didn't Pittman have him beat? Like, why he, he got hit that? on the throw? Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah, that's not on him. But yeah, so when you have two receivers in the top five, Tom Brady, yep. you are just you're insane. working magic. And I, you know, Chris Godwin had a respectable game. So, but uh, you know, when you get two touchdowns and however many yards, it's going to make a right. difference. But Kadarius Tony. He, oh looked, he was goodness. having a breakout game until he decided he wanted to box. <laughs> the, he had this catch. So, you know, you saw all the little juke moves. He had this catch. Oh, did he? He's short. Oh, thank. I mean, it's still not going to matter. I needed him to not get two more points. And he just now, he did needs it, to, so. now they need to throw too many fumbles. Yeah, no, actually, that's exactly what needs to happen. Uh, so anyway, continue. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt uh, you. Really. So Kadarius Tony, you get 13 targets. You know, it's like, okay, you think he can be the slot gadget guy. They threw an out route to him about 15 yards down the field. He jumped up over the defender, mm-hmm. came up, caught it, controlled it, toe tapped. And I went, this guy's just different. Like I thought he was going to be like a wreck everyone underneath speed guy, but he can do anything everywhere. He ghosted. Trevon Diggs and it was insanity. I've never right. seen I, anything you know, like it. I've been seeing a lot of hate um, uh, for Trevon Diggs uh, and I and I on Twitter. I gotta say, at least I mean, any guy who gets the number of interceptions that he's gotten so far, you gotta say, good for him. That's special. Yeah. Like that that takes some talent. Although they, I saw some good points that were like, mm, there a lot of a lot of lockdown corners don't get very many interceptions because they aren't thrown on as much. Now maybe this will change for Trayvon because he is going to get thrown at less as the season goes on because people go, oh, he's really good. But if he keeps getting thrown on, that means they're seeing something on tape where he's vulnerable in an aspect of his game. Oh yeah, he's definitely he is. He looks like uh, it, it, you know somebody should run a double move on him because right. I think they could burn him. But right now he's reading every single underneath throw that the teams are playing from behind and trying to not make mistakes against the Cowboys. And uh-huh. he is making them make mistakes. He's undercutting the ball. He's I mean, he's Stefan Diggs, little brother. I mean, were we expecting <laughs> anything different for him to be an exceptional, crazy athlete? No, I, we shouldn't have. I mean, like I, it, it, it's crazy to me that what I saw on Hard Knocks um, is the same player that I'm seeing. Because I watch him get burned a lot on Hard Knocks. And I know it's not one-to-one. I know it's still training camp. But when you get into like the season, I'm like, he is playing way better than what I saw originally on tape. So I think that's good for him. Um, like you'd mentioned, obviously, Evans in the top five, Brown in the top five. One interesting thing about Antonio Brown that I want to talk about is... Um, He's averaging his snap percentage, 54 and a half percent. And he is still commanding seven targets, 11 targets, eight targets a game. Whenever he's on the field, Tom Brady is looking for Antonio Brown. Yeah. I mean, he just he, he's I really do think beside other than Gronk and AB is his favorite target. I think he was AB is going to look back. We're going to look back this off season and go ab was a steal at the draft just he was going in the ninth round oh absolutely uh mike williams coming in at two i mean when you get left open wide open twice for deep bombs i mean there's not really a whole lot you can you can do uh mike williams 36 and a half points and half point 16 targets he only caught eight of them but he only needed eight of them like i mean he dominated and then Devonte adams same example 16 targets any receiver who's any good you get 16 targets you're gonna dominate 200 yeah. yard day for Devonte adams yeah Devonte adams is the best A monster <laughs> it's the best in the league and i so hope that he and rogers leave my division my goodness <laughs> well the last dance you, you saw uh, at the beginning of the season so yeah uh, let's move on to running backs. So we got this Miles. is not real. No, it is real. But Miles Gaskin, Derrick Henry, Austin Eckler, Alvin Kamara, Kareem Hunt. We'll start with Kareem Hunt to work our way back up. Kareem Hunt had a pretty good game. Only 44 percent of snap share, but 12 attempts for 61 yards on the ground. He had two touchdowns and he caught five balls for only 28 yards. But Yeah, I mean, he's 
in PPR, he's unbelievably valuable. He's basically going to oh, yeah. score every single week and catch five balls. And yep. right there is 11 points. It doesn't matter if he only gets 50 yards because, it, you know, then you're having 16 points. Right. And that's a, that helps you win every single uh, week. Alvin Kamara, 88% of snaps. He had 71 yards in the ground, and he had 51 yards through the air. He scored yep. it on the air or in the air and on the ground, two touchdowns. Yep. Eckler, 17 attempts for 66 yards and two touchdowns. And then oh, he had another touchdown. The, he he almost didn't have two touchdowns on the ground, but he got pulled into the end zone by the Browns, which that, was super yeah, smart. I they wanted needed. to talk about oh, that was and see, that's one where like Brandon Staley, I thought that he would just have Justin Herbert take it and run back and just kick the field goal. Like I, I would uh, thought about that too. Like handing just it off was, it was was not the right play. Handing it off was not the right play at all. No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so either. It worked out for him. They ended up winning. But uh, Eckler, Eckler has been unbelievable. He's been very very good. Um, Derrick Henry's also been unbelievable. Thirty one points. Twenty nine. They can't attempts. do anything on offense, and no other team can stop him. And they I know, give him the ball insane. thirty times, and it's like one hundred and thirty yards and two touchdowns is what he's basically mm-hmm. averaging. They even got AJ Brown back, and he was a dud this fucking. Or, no, sorry, no this see, week. he wasn't. He wasn't a. He wasn't a dud. He got tackled at like the inch line. I mean, he sure, was sure, but he, he still only caught three balls or two balls like on that five whole, targets. All, that whole offensive line has just been can't pass protect. Uh, and then running back one on the week, Miles Gaskin. Uh, he had twenty five yards on the ground. They were playing the Bucks. That's gonna happen. He had seventy four yards through the air and ten receptions on ten targets for two touchdowns. This is a fluke. This will not be a consistent thing at all, especially with their quarterback situation being the way that it is. Even if two is back for week six, I, I am not all about this. Now, a lot of people missed on these points anyway. It's Miles Gaskin did not burn anybody because um, no one played Miles Gaskin. I don't know unless why it was an emergency. Would. Yeah, right. So I mean I I wouldn't put much. Yeah, stock David into Montgomery that. couldn't get a suitable backup, and you're like, I gotta throw him out there. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, let's go to tight ends. Tight end one, David Njoku, then Kyle Pitts. Finally, it only took them going to a different country. Uh, yeah. Dawson Knox, Hunter Henry, and Travis Kelsey back in the top five. That is his fourth out of five weeks in the top five. Uh. Kelsey was all right. I mean, not what you expect. He had 10 targets, but he only caught six of them for 57 yards. That Bills defense was all over him. They were physical in that game. They were extremely physical. Yeah. But he caught a touchdown. Uh, Hunter Henry got a ton of targets, eight targets, six receptions. He had a touchdown. Yeah, this one, that, this one confuses me because Hunter Henry is the blocking tight end. Sure. John I- Smith is the athletic tight end. Here's what I think. They don't really have much for receivers anyway. I mean, I know they've got Jacoby Myers, and I know. But they they John, have they have John Johnny run better, more routes. They really no, they have, didn't. No, he oh, ran did they not? six routes last week. That's bizarre to me. He, See, I, and I he was just, in 33 plays, so he was blocking. Did he look better blocking? I didn't get to see this game, but all I've seen is box score for this one. So in my mind, I'm assuming Johnny was running a wider set of routes and Henry is, uh, you know, running over the middle. But I mean, Mac Jones has looked the best of the rookie quarterbacks, I would say. Um, Statistically, he has. He did look really good against the Bucs, but also he only is going six yards deep over the middle. He's not going like he's not uncorking it ever. So I, I have a hard time thinking that he's going to be a viable fantasy option anytime soon. But yeah, Hunter Henry ended up eking out a uh, touchdown. So he is in the top five. Dawson Knox, this is a weird stat line. Four targets, three receptions for 117 yards and a touchdown. If you started I'm sorry, Lamar happy. Jackson is a cheat code. Oh, what, what I got to see here. And there they're he going to show this replay. There he goes. Oh, please tell me he doesn't throw it. Okay. Just, this is just, <laughs> I mean, he just oh, juked Leonard. Yeah, he, he ran duked, about 30 yards juked. to get 10 there, though. Yeah, but. I like those uniforms. I like the black on purple. Um, now, Dawson Knox, he's, Dawson Knox has been really, really good. Especially, I mean, he's been playing an outrageous amount of snaps for the Bills. He's always in there, so he's always 
available to catch passes this week he had really he had a lower volume but the bills only ran so many plays on offense they ran yeah. like i think the ratio is like one to two for what the chiefs ran yeah i you know he's a third year guy he's someone that i've picked up and dropped at least 10 times between my dynasty sure. leagues and did not mm. have him coming into this year because i thought emmanuel sanders gabriel davis gabriel it's davis be has been very quiet emmanuel it's sanders look good Emmanuel Sanders sell the crap out of that guy. Sell high. See, I th- I thought that last week, but then I don't know. Every passing week, I'm like, Stephon Diggs, are you there? Hello. He will be. Don't worry. He has to be. Like, I mean, wh- how many how many weeks you get? Like, okay, let's play a game. Uh, if he, how many weeks before you start panicking on Stephon Diggs? Like three weeks more of this, or, or are you still after three weeks? You're like, it'll happen. Like, we'll get there. I, I'm I'm starting digs every single week yeah but what i'm saying what i'm saying is in three weeks if you have three more performances like this i mean are you just are you holding him all season or are you at a point looking to go hey i gotta get here because you are starting him anyone who has digs is starting him and he's hurting your team buy if you can buy him for anything really just any other wide receiver buying him is way better put out yeah uh okay uh kyle pitts tight end two 26.9 points finally i mean he, he didn't get an increased target share necessarily he saw two more targets than he than he saw last week i mean eight targets he's seen seven targets now he's seen 10 uh he caught nine of them for 120 yards and a touchdown i i mean i'm g- happy for him he does look great he looks great running down the field but yeah, hopefully that they realize that this is a guy who can do things now. Very similar to Kadarius Tony, they figured out this guy should be involved in the offense. It's better for our team. But yep, there's I, the official John Gruden statement. Yep, I have resigned as head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, so with Kyle Pitts, I mean, with Ridley back and say Russell Gage back, I, I don't think Russell Gage hurts him too much, but Ridley should cut into it a little bit. I, I mean. Are you concerned that he will hardly hit top five tight ends the rest of the season? Or do you think that we're going to see him here a lot moving forward? Pitts? Yeah. Uh, I'm all for um, all for Pitts. I've been saying okay. buy low on him, um, and I have. I bought low yeah. on him. Um, and it worked out. I, he's clearly going to help them win games. And yeah. I think they finally figured out. Even that though they tried the their to... hardest to lose it in London. Yeah. <laughs> Falcons. Uh, Falcons, man. Tied on one on the week. David Njoku. This is also mm-hmm. fluke. I mean, like, I like David Njoku. I think he's athletic, but I, I... Watch for him to move to the Cardinals with Max Williams out. I was wondering that. I was... They that said they or, were looking to make a trade. That or... And I am hoping to God this happens. The Bears are like, here, take Jimmy Graham. See, I, I, I they need a big red zone body. Sure. I was wondering, honestly, if the Giants would try to move on from Evan Ingram and try to move him. Oh, that would be um, terrifying. That would be terrifying. I and I and I he hasn't been great for the for the Giants. He's gonna be expensive. I, I figured if they can move him, that would be beneficial to everybody. Um but I, I that one is just that's a pipe dream in my head, so but again, if you've got David and Joku, I mean, I mean, and you started him, that's probably not the craziest thing in the world. It was a thought it was a high scoring game and tight end landscape is uh, hell. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, OK, you got any other tight end news you want to talk about here? Um, George Kittle was put on IR. Um, that was something that we hadn't really talked about. Uh, he's going to be on IR for the next two weeks. I don't know. I mean, he hasn't looked amazing while playing no, either. They're hoping that IR is going to help him, you know, not have the I'm hoping he doesn't injury. play against the Bears. And then he <laughs> sure. can come back. Uh, okay. So uh, the next thing we're going to do, we're, uh, we're going to play something called Game Chasers. Uh, I've been looking a lot at the upcoming schedule, and there are games that are just 
way better in the sense of fantasy production just because they're supposed to be shootouts and high scoring games i kind of want to get an idea of what you're thinking in week six of like what games are you chasing for points this is for fantasy obviously but also maybe for some dfs listeners like if you're thinking where can i get the most points if you play daily fantasy sports play the tampa bay philadelphia eagles game that's that's your game that's your chase oh absolutely i Jalen Hurts has found ways to score yeah, for this team. Me. And it, to, to be told, the Bucks' defense hasn't been outstanding except for against the run. And the one thing that the Eagles do not do is run the ball. So I would anticipate a lot of passing. The Bucks are going to score like crazy because it's just he's going to throw wherever Darius Slay is not. Yep. Um, and it's going to be a lot of points on a Thursday night. Oh. I would agree with that. That was almost one of my games. Uh, my two games are uh, I want people to chase Chiefs and the Washington football team. Both of those defenses are atrocious, like absolutely abysmal. I don't know how the Washington I don't know how the Washington football team is bad either. Their coaching, it their personnel, it their does age, not make sense. But they are. So, I mean, and both of these offenses are high powered. It's actually weird to say that Washington has a high powered offense, but they score points. And I think that you could definitely chase those. And then the Cardinals versus the Browns. These teams both have good defenses, but they've shown that they can give up points as well. I don't know. I mean, just off or the NFL is a scoring league. You know, I mean, no one plays defense usually like they did back in the 80s. Typically, you're going to get more points than you are not. So I like Cardinals Browns this week as well. That's that's a good one. I would say um if Daniel Jones comes back uh-huh. next week, Rams Giants would be, be very good. interesting. If without if it's Mike Glennon, dear God, no. I mean, the only way that that could possibly be good is if Daniel Jones is there because they're going to be without Saquon. They're going to probably be without Kenny Galladay. Oh man, down on the one. All righty here. So now we got some week six waiver targets. And again, this the, every guy we say here is not a target. We're just going to talk about guys who are trending. And we're going to uh, we're going to kind of discuss if we think that they're an ad, if we think that they're kind of a void. Uh, first up, QB is this he fumbled the, it. It's going to be a defensive touchdown. No, Go Darius. No, he pulled his hammy. He's going to outrun him. He's going to oh, run him. off the ball. Darius Slater pulled his hammy, looked to the guy, and threw it to him. Uh, that's so bad for Darius Leonard, though. The Colts need this win desperately, but, I mean, so, so do the Ravens. Oh, no. Okay. It should have been a walk-in touchdown for Lamar. And it should have been. I don't know what happened there. I needed that touchdown, too. Gosh dang it. Up knees. Oh, oh crap. It is actually a fumble. Uh, oh, is it? I thought yep. his knee might have it's, been done. No, it's out of his hands. When he hits it with the other hand, it comes out. Watch his fingers. Uh, yep. Uh, I don't know if they're going to rule oh, that. Oh, it, it's out. It's a Colts touchdown. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing holding the ball like that when he's trying to run in there. Like Someone but, check on Ian. Anywho, let's <laughs> move on here to the our waivers here. Darnold is on the waiver list here. Again, he's trending. He just had the worst week he's had. Um... In all of this season, he only had 10 points. He threw three picks. I mean, he looked like old Sam Darnold. Uh, yeah. But he plays the Vikings this week. So I think that if you're looking to stream somebody, I'm totally down for it. Uh, same thing. We got Heineke versus the Chiefs. We already talked about that matchup. Should be a shootout as long as Terry McLaurin is Yeah, I would there. absolutely start Heineke. It, um, he had a lower week this week because they – Handed the ball off twice to Antonio Gibson. Yeah. Um, do you have any QBs that you want to kind of highlight for a, a stream or a possible waiver pickup? Mm, I mean, as far as... Uh, I got to look at a league that's not dynasty. All right. I mean, like, guys who are trending right now, Geno Smith, Mike Glennon, like, they're, these are trending no, gosh, guys. No. Oh, we're right, but I'm just like... Um, obviously, Geno Smith, a majority of his ads are probably Russell Wilson owners. I um, mean, Baker Mayfield would be, if he's floating out there, Arizona and um, 
Cleveland should put a, up a lot of points. Right. Um, even if it's not, you know, touchdowns across, the, you know, f- a four touchdown game, he could have three touchdowns and 300 yards to stay in this game. Right. Um, let's see what else we got here. Otherwise, yeah, I think that's kind of all I got for QBs. Oops, let's move on to wide receivers. Uh, Kadarius Tony is like my number one waiver wire wide receiver to pick up. I don't think anyone would argue with that. A- until Michael Thomas comes back, Callaway I think is a is a pretty decent ad. I know it's yeah. it's disgusting, but I mean he's as long as Thomas isn't there, somebody's gonna have to catch the football. Uh, yep. Emmanuel Emmanuel Sanders. I think he's an all right pick. I mean, like if if you're flexing and you're you need somebody who you are looking for a touchdown. Uh, Tim Patrick as long again as long as Jerry Judy is out. I mean, there's no KJ Hamler. It's it's Tim Patrick, Cortland Sutton, and then Noah Fant. And then also Rondell Moore. I kind of wouldn't bring him up just based on his usage, but with Max Williams out until they replace the tight end position. It's, I think there's a really good chance Rondell Moore could take a step up and get some more time. Yeah, we'll see. I would see. I would say more of AJ Green. Do you think more AJ Green? I, I was yeah. wondering that as well. I mean, he's getting six targets already. I mean, if he gets if AJ Green gets eight targets on the third best corner, like uh, you know, what I mean, like he's not getting the team's number one corner. He's Christian Kirk is usually getting the second corner. So AJ Green is usually free and open to get some quality targets from Kyler Murray. So, yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know if, I don't think he pulled his hamstring. I think he tripped. Uh, if he pulled his hamstring, that'd have been so sad. All right. Uh, he pulled up like, <laughs> I, uh, I think he was nervous that he was going to get hit there on the side. I know Lamar's upset and he should be, you can't fumble on the goal on like that. All right, for running backs on the waiver wire, number one is Booker, 100%. I mean, it just... I would disagree. I, I The reason I... Well, it's it's Booker if you're the if you're the Barkley owner, 100%. Yeah. Um, who, who are you thinking is the, the number one? I would say Daryl Williams. It would be better. I, see, I, the thing that scares me about Daryl Williams is that Jarek McKinnon is there and they've held him for this long. I, I think they are going to use him. Yeah, I, except for Daryl Williams has been basically the goal line back, and we get some more sure. usage. Well, I, 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 I should say I don't necessarily I don't hate it. Like Daryl Williams is my second guy to pick up. Uh, Booker, I just think is the clear. Like they don't have any other running back. Like he will get a majority of the work. Um, Miles Gaskin is going to be on the list because everyone's going to be like they dropped him or if he's floating out there, and then you think that you want to get him. I would recommend not doing that don't waste your fab like people are gonna spend a ton of fab. illegal forward pass oh they're saying leonard didn't pitch it backwards what oh i don't know that's interesting i mean that saves them a touchdown but honestly that's better for me i need i need jonathan taylor to score more points uh, alexander madison is a weird one to me because He's a handcuff. If you're the cook owner, you need to go get him. But he's been really good every time that he's had to be out there. Dalvin Cook always misses some time, but I think this ankle injury might linger. Yeah, I would. If you Alexander Madison or A.J. Dillon is available, go get them. I, I would prefer A.J. Dillon to Alexander Madison um, in this because I feel like A.J. Dillon is a better player than Alexander Madison. And if you if both of them become ones on their team dylan is going to be more valuable to you most likely but uh, again if you are the uh if you're the owner of dalvin cook oh Pittman, please you're hurt you're killing me if you're the owner of dalvin cook you need alexander madison if you're the owner of aaron jones you need aj yeah Dillon. and Tight i think a- aj dylan's oh. becoming a flex worthy play yeah he had a passing touchdown this week did he not yeah uh, uh receiving touchdown Sorry, yeah, not a passing. passing. Through the air. Uh, So tight ends, we have Dawson Knox. If he's out there, I think you should go and get him. I think he can solve, like, your tight end problems. I don't know if he's going to be top five every week, but he is involved in that passing game, and he is a red zone target. So I like Dawson Knox a lot. If you need a tight end, he's the guy I'm going to get. 
Wow. So, John Gruden. Oh, these we got emails, more breaking news. These emails came from the Washington football team. Oh, interesting. Jay Gruden used to be the coach there. Right. Yes, he did. He's the one who whistle blew on the CEO, started really looking into it. Mm. And was really trying to advocate for the women cheerleaders, all of that stuff. Right, right. And then he got fired. All of a sudden, in the middle of this investigation, John Gruden's emails showed up. Yeah. Now, I, 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 I'm not, I, I have no respect for what John Gruden said. Absolutely horrendously wrong. Oh, absolutely. However, Washington football team, they have got, people so are going to burn. Yeah, uh, if they are willing somebody. to leak that. I, they also just had people, they just had people raid their uh, facility. Yeah. Um, and arrest two, I believe, two um, trainers. So, I mean, that whole thing is, they need to clean up shop. I mean, the, their best hire that they've made in the last however many years is is Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera is a solid dude, and he is a dude, he is a guy with great character. And if it, you're going to have somebody rebuild your franchise, I think Gruden is a great guy to do it. Um, but anyway, if you, yeah, keep, keep us posted. If there's more news that comes out about that, I'd like to hear it. Yeah, um, there's some other stuff that is surfacing, and wow, just yeah. oh uh, man, Washington football team that <laughs> they are in for a world of hurt. Uh, the other tight end, I'm looking at Schultz. I, he's really emerged as a guy for the for yeah. the Cowboys. Yeah, I think he had the largest target share of any tight end this week. That would be uh, crazy to me on a team with Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb. Now, granted, yeah. Gallup tight should be end back target next share. Week. So t- right, tight right. end percentage on anything. They also have Blake Jarwin, who is a competent tight end, and everyone thought he might be a breakout last year prior to yes. him blowing Destroying up his, his knee. knee. Um, I also have Ricky Steels Jones on here, just be- if Logan Thomas is out. If Logan, T- Logan Thomas is playing, I don't want Yeah, Logan Thomas is on IR, isn't he? Oh, I didn't know if he was placed on IR. I knew he had a hamstring yeah, injury. I didn't know if that Yeah, was. I think he's on IR. Okay, so then, yeah, Ricky Seals-Jones, I yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, he played basically every snap. He played a ton. Uh, and then I see you added uh, Njoku here, right? What? You added Njoku to the list of tight ends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What makes you? You know, if he's involved, um, it's worth it. Oh, my goodness. The Colts are Please. spanking the Ravens. Let's go, Jonathan Taylor is my boy. I have a bet with Alec uh, kind of going. That he thinks that he thought that Mike Davis would outscore Jonathan Taylor this season. Or finish higher than him, I should say. And I just don't see it being a possibility. You know, I have to bring this up, and I share this with everyone. If I had not, I traded away Cordero Patterson sure. for a second-round pick. You sure did. In Dynasty. If I had not, I would have had the number two, number three, and number four running backs in full point PPR. Yes, yes, you in, would have. In Zeke, Eckler, and Cordero. Sandwiched beautifully right between them. I'm pretty sure. Let me let me check here. You're welcome, Tony. Uh, season oh. stats 2021. Oh, is he going to? Oh, he's. <laughs> oh, no. Did he just throw did they go for two? Oh, they yeah, did he went two for two, two, and he picked it off, and he was about a step away from returning it. Man. All righty. Still would have been a three-score three score game. but. Uh, so let's round this out here with uh, you had Njoku. What, what makes you think that uh, you're looking at Njoku here for this? Look, he's always had the athletic profile to Right. Get the big play. The reason why he's worth, I, I, you know, my advice on the Kirk fans football podcast was a dollar of fab. Sure. He shouldn't get your like top. That. He shouldn't get your top priority. Um, if you're in a waiver league, he's worth a shot because he's expressed not wanting to be in Cleveland. That's true. He if he gets thrown into Cliff Kingsbury's offense. He's a much better receiver than Max Williams. That's also true. More athletic as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hot. Yeah. He's I mean, worth I, the I shot. Don't mind it. He, uh, 
I mean, he had obviously a great game. I mean, they don't have any wide receivers. They have they have Odell, and that's it. Well, Jarvis is on IR, so I. And they don't even need to use Odell. They scored forty-two points, and Odell had twenty yards. Yeah, exactly. Explain Odell that rep- to I, me. Isn't hasn't Odell reportedly uh, said that he wants out? That was a fake Schefter. Oh, was it okay? Because I, I I thought I had heard that somewhere, and I was like, I'm very interested. I think you heard it from me in a a chat. And oh, I I did hear it from you, but I heard it somewhere else first, and then when I heard it from you, I had in my head I was like double confirmation. I was like, oh shoot, I it must be real. And then I learned that. Uh, then I didn't hear anything else about it. So, but anyway, I think uh, I think that's gonna be our show today. Is there anything else you want to talk about with the people? Um, with the people, no, I don't think there's anything more to to add to this. I do All have right. a question for you, though. Yes, what is that? Where does Jamar Chase rank in your dynasty wide receivers? In my dynasty so, wide so receivers? Gonna, yeah, so we're going to do a little bit rookies, of... As rookies or as, well, like, uh, as it, all wide all, receivers? All wide receivers. So in dynasty today, okay. would you rather have, and I'm just going to yeah, rattle yeah, go off some it. guys around there, DK Metcalf or Jamar Chase? Jamar Chase. Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase? I think Justin Jefferson, at, from so far, I, I like Justin Jefferson as a player, I think, better. But I think based on the quarterback situation for Dynasty, I have to go with Jamar Chase. Okay. Okay. That's a, that's a good tiebreaker. That would have been, yeah. That would be right. I mean, like, I like Justin Jefferson a lot, but with I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, Kirk is I don't think Zimmer's long for that Vikings, yeah. uh, you know, that Vikings coaching job. And they would have to extend Kirk. I don't know if the new guy they bring in is going to want to even do that or if they'd rather draft somebody. I think Justin Jefferson might be QB proof if he's like targeted a ton. But just like I Alan just, Robinson. Yeah, just oh, like yeah. Alan Robinson. A.J. Brown. Or Jamar oh, Chase. Jamar Chase. AJ Brown is AJ Brown's upsetting me. He is a physical freak. He is an athletic monster. But I I, I mean he's hurt a lot. And I don't know. I, I at this point I'm taking Jamar Chase. Fair. Somebody just went down on the sideline and I wasn't sure what was happening. They like grabbed his leg. Oh, and see. he like stuck it up in the air. Yeah, some of the stories coming out in relation to Former Washington football team, Bruce Allen yeah. and John Gruden's relationship. Certain photos from Washington football team cheerleaders. Oh, brilliant. This is going to be a, an absolute it's gonna be, fiesta. Uh, Clown fiesta. Yeah. Do you have it's, any more comparisons for Jamar Chase? Would you take Tyreek Hill? Tyreek Hill, I would take Tyreek Hill over. Devontae Adams. I would take Devontae yep. Adams over. And, and those two, I think, are the two. Is there anybody else that you would take over Jamar Chase? Because right now, like, I, I'm thinking those are the top dynasty guys. Would you take D Hop? No, I wouldn't take D Hop. Okay. Um, now, like, there, I, I might I make an argument for. I might make an argument for C D Lamb, in the sense of, uh, I like C D Lamb. I think as a more talented wide receiver. And I really like his quarterback situation, but he's just he's going to be the two there until he takes a leap to become the true one. I mean, Jamar hasn't done that either. I mean, I, I he is a really good wide receiver, but they've got other receivers there that Joe Burrow likes to target. It's not like he is the clear de facto guy there. Jamar Chase is heading that way, but until either of them make that leap, you know, it's. Fair enough. Mm. Fair enough. So. So three or four? Yeah. Yeah, three or four probably, especially for Dynasty. Jamar Chase or Mike Williams? Huh. Marquise I mean, Jamar- Hollywood Brown. <laughs> oh, just a long bomb? Yep. Um, that, I'm saying, was, like, that was I'm, beautiful. I'm taking, I'm taking, obviously, Jamar Chase, but Mike Williams, though, has always been talented. We have always seen the talent, but oh, he's, yeah. always, he's always been hurt. Uh, this year, he isn't hurt. They moved him into the X. Yep. I don't know. Revitalization. I have him on my t- on my dynasty team, and my my wide receivers on that team are nuts. I've got Devontae Adams, Antonio Brown, 
Mike Williams, and then I I thought I had a steal with uh, Kenny Galladay as well, but that has turned out to be nothing. Yeah, uh, would you like the true number one for the Giants? Because I have Gadarius <laughs> Tony. <laughs> That's interesting. Need. Maybe maybe after this, I might actually reach out for you. I'd be if you're willing to trade him, I might be willing to deal. Yeah, it'd be uh, it depend on what what I would get in return. Yeah, you might get a first for him. You don't have a first. Do I you? do not a recent first. Twenty twenty four first. That's our show, folks. Lamar, what are you? He oh, please tell me he fumbles. No, he just fell <gasps> down. No, I think he made it. Did he? No. He reached over. Elbow well, down. Lamar's upset. He just took his helmet off on the field, dude. Was that He's the third down? Half yard short. No, it was a two point conversion. Oh, they just okay, scored the okay. touchdown. Because if two point conversion. And then yeah, another touchdown with two-point conversion down. and a field goal would put them back in this game. It really anyway. hurts me, though, that they're going for two because I have Justin Tucker. What are you doing? <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else or are we out of here? Uh, you know, I, we need to find something to fight over. We do. We uh, Next episode, we will we'll come with something. I was hoping that Jamar Chasing would incite a fight, but you were too reasonable. Well, I'm, I mean, like, I think that uh, there are people who, like I said, I mean, C.D. Lamb, I might take over him, uh, but I don't know if um, I don't know if that's something that incites a fight for you, because I think you're also high on C.D. Lamb, right? I see. And to me, Amari Cooper is more target demanding than T. Higgins will ever be. No, so I mean, the, I, I those are going to be next to each other for at least the next three years, I think. Well, but my thing is that. I think that CD could take the step to be like, I am the one now. And I think that could totally be a thing that happens. I know yeah. that I just, I think he's just, that I mean, talented. he has incredible talent. I mean, you saw on the deep bomb from Dak, oh, but yeah. their offense is just, we're going to run the ball and we're going to, everybody's going to get a chance to score. Yeah. It's just a matter of who actually does. All it's right, very yeah. much Buffalo bills, except for they have a running game. A Buffalo. Looks like they might have Zach Moss. Looks like he might actually be something for them. But we'll yeah, see. he was one that if he's on your waivers, go pick him up. Yeah, I think he's definitely worth a shot. I would go pick him up. I, you know, I kept saying sell high on him because of the fact that I was like, they're not going to keep blowing people out. They just blew out the Chiefs. I don't know they what did. more you want from that defense and that <laughs> team. They have spent so many draft picks on that defense, it and it, it clicked. It oh, yeah. clicked. It, it, and they are scary. They're the top scoring offense, top scoring defense. All righty. We will see you next week. Later, people.